Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I am Kim Warner, and um, I'm just going to discuss some things that's on my heart this morning um, in the matters of the world. Um, I do biblical classes, um, astrology classes, and psychology classes. Um, and all of them will bring us into a meshing of understanding ourselves. I feel like this here time is a time of us taking accountability for our own actions. You hear a lot of things going on in the world and people are, you know, fighting over boats and that kind of thing. But I believe that um, those that are running for office, they can appeal to the masses, but it's up to the masses to make a decision on who they're going to vote to. Now, that's not my discussion, but I think that the influence of different type of energies is affecting us overall. And uh, I began to think about families. I began to think about fathers and mothers and um, the children. And in many cases, there's been separation um, within families, you know, we see a lot of children leaving home at early ages because the environment is not conducive to their mental health or just because they've been influenced by others. We also see uh, mothers and fathers that have encouraged their children to leave because of the environmental factors that they may bring into the house. However, this is neither here nor there because in every religion, there has been a faith base. That means when we look at cultures, there has been a faith base produced for the individual cultures to um, hold on to and find God within them. And what that means is, is that there's going to be a situation that's going to help you to find God within you. In most cases, people are running to and fro, just like our Bible, or I would say I have studied Christianity and I've studied other religions as well. So I believe in love overall. I believe that if a mother is having problems with her children or a father with his children, I'm going to promote love and I'm going to show them psychologically where there's a breakdown in the mental uh, status for the family and also on a theological uh, basis where the Bible tells us, like in Malachi uh, 4, that... Um, he will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children, lest there will be a curse. Well, it's true. It's a curse upon, you know, the earth. However you see it, there's a problem. And the problem is not going to end until people begin to take accountability for their actions. We have so many people blaming each other. And this is within the households. Um, in Luke, I think it's 11, it said that mothers and and daughters will begin to turn against each other. This is concerning. It started with the widow's might. Um, the children will come against the families. That kind of thing is not word verbatim, but that's what Christ is trying to say. Um, in the end, the son of man would be coming. And this would bring a change. However, can we identify with the need to change within ourselves? Can we stop relying on others to make decisions for us? Can we take analysis of ourselves and begin to ask, what is it that I'm doing wrong? Can we stop blaming others? Can we start today and say that I have responsibility for my life to make the right decisions? If I don't know the right decision, then I should seek counsel to get it. Can we do that? Because that's where... The beginning of change is for us. The beginning of change is not where we continue to hurt each other. Someone has to sit down and say, okay, how do I make this right? And in most cases, when someone has hurt another person, we can't make the right wrong at that time. But it takes one person to begin to make something right. How do I know? This is not just from talk. This is what I've seen and what I've known and what I've walked. You know, I think that the Christian, let me just say that, they forget about the fruit of the Spirit. We can go to church on Sundays, but we forget about the garden that we're creating. We even forget about the garden that we are 
to uh, release ourselves from, which is the garden of thistles and uh, corruption that, you know, grapes were coming in and uh, there were also thistles, and Isaiah talks about that. Well, that's a mixture of good and bad or evil. And it's, I don't want to say that we don't need bad, but we don't need to be bad. We don't need to continue our life in that way when we want something more. How in the world does a person think they're going to be blessed when they are talking against their brothers and sisters? There's no God that is going to be okay with that. When you go over to um, Deuteronomy 5, it tells you that you should love your mother and your father. You should not talk against people, the gossiping. You should not commit adultery. All of those statutes and laws that Moses gave are actually uh, laws to establish moral standings for us. It's like a border, the way. Because it keeps you from navigating from the left uh, into the right. Now, the the law truly was, they said, when Christ came, it was uh, taken away. The Bible tells us from Paul that, you know, um, the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. And this is this is my my conversation. Because the more good that you do for people rather than hurting them and blaming them, you are now establishing your connection with spirit, which is in Galatians 5, when it tells you that the fruit of the spirit is acquired. Jesus did not tell us just because we believed in him or um, he said you would be saved. He said if you believed that you would be saved. But now after the believer has come into a place of believing, they have to establish that belief in all different areas. This is not Jesus' work to do. This is your and I, my, our work to do. It's a lot of confusion here because I've been amongst people that said, well, we don't even have to talk about the Old Testament because grace established. Listen, you have no grace until you consciously wake up and understand that there's a cross for Christ and there or Jesus and there was one for me. When we go up and we've been betrayed by people, we're in a place where error is being crossed out. Now, there's not one person that is um, exempt from that because every time you make a mistake, you're brought to the table to get a lesson and take a test spiritually to see if you can pass it or if you've done it. No one is exempt. Not even the one that betrayed Christ was exempt. He was promoting Christ. You see what I'm saying? At the end of the day, when you read about him, his lesson was death. He hung himself. He woke up to himself because the spirit must have used him for you to walk among someone so great and you sell them out for money, he had to wake up from that and say, what have I done, right? Just think about it, you know, you don't have to take what I'm saying, but there's a lot of people out there that are hurting and that hurt is being magnified and it's telling them to go hurt somebody else. A lot of people are in need, but then I look at the Bible and I say, it says in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I have no want. So where's your need at? If you have God in your life and everyone that breathes, I don't even care if you have not confessed Christ. If you breathe, you got God within you. It's time for you to take some, some walks and some time alone and talk to yourself. Because if you need money or a job, you need to speak to your God. And let me tell you something. You cannot get around pride, envy, jealousy, and stride. You cannot hide that from God. When you're in need, your needs will not be met until you release yourself from prideful, envious striving, jealousy, and envy. Because those are blocks. They're blocks within you. People think that you're happy when they see your face, but they don't know the hell that's going on in your heart. Your heart has to be clean in order for you to manifest. So when you look at Deuteronomy 5, you get a big picture on things that you as an individual, you and I can identify with that will help us to get a moralistic standing in life and begin to say, okay, I've been gossiping. I've been adulterating. 
I've been doing this, that, and the other. I sold my brother out. I've been selling drugs, so I've been killing people. I've been doing this, that, and the other. And that time comes when it's like your heart says it's time for you to meet with me. And that's you, you and your God. So in that time, begin to confess those scriptures in Deuteronomy 5 so that you can understand what the law is saying for yourself. So many people have went away from it. They were strayed from it and they don't understand. You cannot be blessed. You can't, you can't totally be blessed until you meet God where God is. And God is in your heart. If there's corruption there, you can be saved. But you got to know that as you are saved, you get into the company of believers and that's where your growth begins. You are saved, but you have now you got to you got to start acquiring the fruit of the spirit. Jesus said, in order to worship me, you must worship me in spirit and truth. He did not say go around compelling people, making them feel like they're nothing that they are the worst people in the world. He said that teach them to worship. Why? Because even the prostitute, her life was changed instantly because she had met with this man that had an anointed word that took her into worship. She started running all over the place to tell people about this man. Worship, worship. It breaks the yoke of the enemy. Why do you want to do it? Because when you done went all over everywhere looking for answers, your answer is with you and your God. This here God is universal. It serves us all. No one has to be without in this world, but it's influences that we follow. Even if it is an influence of evil upon you, wake up. Saul needed David to play the harp. Saul was a king. Now, I'm to tell you something. God is amazing. This wicked spirit would come upon Saul and he would try to hurt David, but David would be the very one that could calm him down. David was a worshiper. David was a bad boy. But God, he loved. You got to make a decision when you're going through things. Who's really responsible? You know? Your situation as a child does not predicate your situation for the levels of life that you can go to. You are making decisions predicated upon your past, which is keeping you stuck. Whatever your parents didn't do for you, whatever you haven't done for you, all of this is your responsibility. Do you understand? There's nobody else responsible because God gave you a life to live for the purpose of good. That's why, that's why you're here. Now, I, I'm not here to hurt nobody, but there's something we got to compel people. Why? Because it's too much. Number one, children are going astray. They believe their friends more than they believe uh, their parents. Now, I understand that because I was a teenager as well. I was a child. And that's a time of sorting out things, but it's not a time to turn against your parents. Not even if they are turned against you because there is guidance amongst children. Reach out. I mean, you can reach out to me. You can email me. I've been a child. I lost the way. Things that my mother said didn't make sense, and I said she was crazy. I wish that she would leave me alone at times back then. But I wouldn't want my mother to leave me alone right now for nothing in the world because everything that she was putting in me, whether I fought it or not, it worked. The, 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 the world didn't work. My grandmother and all of the works and the words that she put in me, my great mother, it worked. But you know what it was more than anything? It was the word. It was God. They put it in me. There's times when I've been in churches right now and I don't understand what's going on because the church has become a division. Some love God and some don't. They go there for the different reasons, but they don't go there for God. But let me tell you something. If we took on the understanding that God in us is really true and I can depend on him, we'll understand that Jesus said, I am the temple. 
We have to come out here and start, start talking to these young people because they are our future. But I tell you what, some of the decisions that they're making, I don't want them to be a part of my future as I'm getting older. I want to see some young people that have an understanding of integrity. I even want parents to get an understanding of in integrity. You ain't lost no battle. You gave up. You get up. You pull up your big girl panties and your big boy britches or tidy whities like my brother call them. And you get yourself back on the word. Get it on the word because the word it established heaven and earth and then it brought the water. It's a, it's, it's, it's a pattern and, and that there's a structure of things that we must do. You cannot escape living righteous. It is not a, a, a religious way. It is a right way. And when the right is in you, the right will produce fruit. Amen. So you can go and look up for the rules because all of the religions have them. Deuteronomy 5. They all, all religions give a faith, faith based process so that people can get to know God for themselves. But you got to be serious about it. You at the place where you're broken in a crossroad where you want to say you're giving up. Yeah, give up. Because that's when that pride is demolished. That envy and that jealousy is demolished. When you're releasing and, and tears are coming. You say, I made some bad decisions. I made some choices. Business is not working properly for me. No one can fix it but God. That means that you're going to have to take some time. And guess what? It's not up to anybody else to fix it. That's why you are who you are. So take some time today to look up Deuteronomy 5, read it, and then read ch chapter 6 and understand how families actually came together and sat at a table. We have to establish these things again and break that, that power of separation mentally, physically. All right? Then you go into Galatians 5 and read about the fruit of the Spirit because as long as you can know that you hate somebody, you need to work on that. Purge me. Help me to release it, God, because you can't get no happiness when you hate. You can't even get a love for yourself with hate. You talking about you want a boyfriend and you want a girlfriend? You ain't got nothing coming but the same pr product of who you are, hate. So don't look around and wonder or cry when your hate has showed up in your face and it slept, slept with you, but then it betrays you to find another woman or another man because that's the production of what you have going on inside of you. All of it has to do with your heart. Deliver me from my enemies. Deliver me from myself. When I ask God to deliver me, that's when the beginning of truth begins to come into my life because now I no longer hate. Now I can get happiness and love. It's a work. It's a work that nobody can do but you and I individually. You can call someone and you can talk with them to get advice, but you cannot call someone to do the work for you. You got to pray for yourself. It's the most powerful prayer. Prayer for yourself. So any questions, leave them in the comment section, subscribe. All that I do is all for good. And um, if anybody has questions and they want to say anything other than that, I know what I'm doing and I know why I do it. I do it because we got a race of people that are dying. And I'm not going to say it's no one else out there. Many of people are giving a message, but this is my message today because people are not accountable. You want integrity? Become accountable. If you hurt somebody, you use them, go and ask for forgiveness. Don't let your pride get in the way. If you betrayed someone, you won't get no mercy until you ask for forgiveness. Why? Because pride has been the issue. Or, you know, like Judas, money. Everybody is programmed about money, and I ain't seeing money as a problem. It's the way that you guys or we, um, Respond to get it, killing people, taking from them, robbing and, you know, stealing things that don't belong to you. 
Think about what you're doing when you're doing it. Always think about people. Always have a, a thought for them because that's what God wants. And I want to say this here. I don't know how you can profess that you love God when you don't love God's people. Now, that's that's something that we got to really think about. That's something that brought me to um, a greater level, because when people had done things to hurt me, you know, I count it all joy now. I was suffering at times. It's been some hard roads that I've walked, but they made me better. So for all of my enemies that watch <laughs> my videos, hey, thank you, because you have made me better. You make me think about how to pray for you in love. You, you made me understand how to love people that people say are unlovable. See, I understand damage. That's why I studied psychology. But I studied the Bible first, and I found that psychology is in the Bible. The Bible helps us to change our wickedness. It's ours. It helps us to identify with our wickedness. That's why I presented Galatians 5, because people are talking about integrity, but they are not demonstrating integrity. Even our leaders. In order to, to get people to see you integral, you have to present yourself integral. That means that any kind of lies and manipulations you've had in that skin, it's got to come out. Your skin is the reason why you sin. Become, a, 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 under, become accommodated to understanding this here. And then also become accommodated to constructive criticism. That is, of course, from people that uh, has your best interests. And so, again, I thank my haters. I thank those that tried to, to hurt me. Because in the midst of the trials and tribulations, what I got out of it is I will not allow you to take the love that God is acquiring in me. I won't, I won't allow it. I'm going to stay in his face. Why? Because I've been through too much to hate and be bitter. I'm going to keep on working on loving. Loving me so that I can love others. Amen. Now take that. And know that you're loved. For that person that feels unlovable, y'all have a blessed day.